Okay, and we're live. Once again, welcome to the Eternal Darkness stream. We're in chapter three, as it says right there. Um, you might notice a few things different. Um, I got uh, new capture equipment. Uh, it actually came just in time. So I am able to display the game itself in a much higher quality uh, widescreen as you can probably see right now and it's a component to HDMI uh, connection <coughs> excuse me so okay well let's just get right to it fortunately the next chapter is right here A small shrine of candles. Their placement appears to be very deliberate, corresponding to the etchings on the table and an illustration upon the wall. Some of the candles have been lit. Well, all of them, actually. So, extinguish those. With the correct sequence of candles being lit, a hidden panel opens. There's a message tube inside. Might be something inside. Let's open it and see. He's found a chapter page entitled Suspicions of Conspiracy. Presence is welcomed, Majesty. As always, I am honored. Our dealings are a pleasure to us both. He lies. As do we all. What is this flaw you wish to discuss with us? My concern is with the other ancients. Ulioth, Chaturga. Should they unite with Mantarok, they will doubtlessly possess enough power to vanquish even thee. As darkness abhors light, and light abhors dark, the others will not, cannot, join forces. Mandarok will be bound, and the others will sink into insanity when I return. As has been foretold. I was unaware. There is much you do not know. And much you be certain to retrieve Mandrock's essence. It is necessary to cement our place in your world. Then what of Charlemagne the Frank? What do you intend for him? The Frank is an instrument of light. He seeks to unite Europe under his banner. With this in place, my guardians will be hard-pressed to perform the functions you require. For your own schemes, Pi. Think of your future. Then Charlemagne will be removed from the picture. Make sure he is dead. Or insane. Or perhaps one and the other. Just make sure he is removed from power. Of course. He is as good as dead. Yeah, let's just get rid of the message tube. From my research, it is apparent that the endeavors of mankind are mere puppetry at the hands of the ancients. Whenever a king vows reform, the ancients move quickly to stifle it. Under the auspices of Emperor Charlemagne the Frank, the new Holy Roman Empire was at the height of its power. Hanc mit ad dominum et imperatorum nostrum, carolum magnum francum. Deliver this to our Lord and Emperor Charlemagne the Frank. No one but him must see it. There are words for his eyes only. At once. 
Hello, kids. My name is Gordon. I have to warn him of this treachery. After Anthony briefly describes his mission, the monk informs him that Charlemagne was last seen in audience with the bishop in the visiting chamber. This must be the visiting chamber. Muffled voices emanate from inside the bishop's visiting chamber. However, the door is locked and Anthony will need the bishop's key to enter and gain an audience with Charlemagne. Visibly disturbed with grief and despair, the mob saw monk. The monk sobs pitifully. God, I can't. I need to. I need to warm up. He recounts that his is not the only death to have occurred recently, and wonders if perhaps the order is being punished for a wavering in faith. Yeah. The monk cordially greets Anthony. However, he brings grave news of the loss of one of his order, who fell from the tower to his death. His tone is guarded, leaving Anthony wondering if this indeed is the truth. Anthony's smarter than he looks. No, yeah, he's busy. Let's investigate. Oh, excuse me. Hmm, what's up here? I must be sneaky. I wonder who that is. Pius Augustus. Hmm. Apparently not an actual man. Yeah, it's not creepy at all. Cradle in what appears to be a leathery hand tie lies a mysterious book. It is bound in human skin and intricately decade, decorated with shrunken bones. It beckons and yearns to be possessed. I really probably should have done a voice warm up. I cannot, can't talk today. A blue urn rests upon the shelf. Something inside. While fumbling around, the urn slips from Anthony's stiff fingers, dashing itself into fragments as it hits the floor. Anthony has found a magical rune. This is where it gets interesting.
somewhat addled by Anthony's distraction, the monk kindly requests to be left alone. It's understandable. I'm not gonna get I'm not gonna get very far with them up here. Hmm. I need to lead them away from their from their research. A funeral casket made from unfinished wood. It is not properly sealed and could probably be opened. Should I open the casket? Seems a little bit like in poor taste. Merely to a clue, though. Oh my god, what is oh, it? happened? This is devil's work. We should get out of here. <laughs> you have proven what we have feared the most. This poor man has been the victim of great evil. Look how his body has been defiled. As if something has burst out from inside him. Here, the devil. take this for your protection. And find the bishop. He must be informed of this horrible discovery. Scromasex. Now might be a good time to go back upstairs. I'll bother the bishop later. Ooh. That's not good. A mysterious gold medallion rests upon the desk. Yeah, that's another magic thing that I need. Hmm. Well, Anthony can't read, so... Faint, warm sunlight filters into the room through these windows. Tiny dust motes drift, caught in the rays of the dying sun, fighting the growing shadow. Hmm. Amongst the tomes and manuscripts, a book brings its attention to itself. Oddly pristine in the dusty shelf. Doesn't quite belong. Let's take the book. No, oh, opens that one. Also, it might be a good idea to uh, equip this little guy. Oh dear God. things. I need a better weapon. Chuck it into its back. Alright. There's probably going to be more of those things, so... We must be vigilant.
Signposting, maybe? Grateful for his life, the monk tells Anthony that what happened. He was carrying a sacred urn from the baptismal font when he was confronted by the bishop, who was brandishing a large blade and whose eyes burned with an evil fire. Frightened, the monk dropped the urn out of shock and ran. Returning to retrieve the urn, he found only the sword the bishop was, had left behind. With thanks, he gives the bishop's sword to Anthony. two-edged sword. The monk ambles around nervously, as if happy, expecting the demonic bishop to return at any moment. I'm sorry, people. I usually don't fumble my words as badly. But... Hmm. I'm just having an off day, I guess. Oh, yes. Two-thirds of a broken urn. Oh. We must remain vigilant. No, what are you doing? I did. I did receive the new capture card. That's uh, that's why the gameplay footage is in widescreen now, and probably a lot better quality than yesterday. Magical code. Answering a question from chat. sound good either. This uh, actually isn't my first playthrough, but I'm I'm hamming it up for the camera. In fact, this is actually my original copy that I bought back in 2002. Yeah, 2002. My original GameCube disc. A Phil Red Urn. I've actually played through this game many times. It's also the very first review I ever wrote. I, I still have that review on, uh, on the Gentleman Gamer website. I wouldn't actually recommend reading it though. It's I wrote it back in high school. So just keep that in mind. Maybe? No. His robes aren't fancy enough. An iron plate in the floor is carved with three curious circles. Dried splashes have marred its pockmarked and worn surface.
Amongst the books on the table rests an ancient scroll of what appears to be paper. As if it be anything else? Okay. Antorbach and Magramore. Well, I've got Magramore already, so... Another magical codex. My first spell. Assign. Yeah, let's just go ahead and assign this spell to... Let's assign it to the Y button. Yes, yes, magic meter and all that. So... Perhaps it can be repaired somehow. It can be repaired. And repair the blue one. Well, this is the only one that's filled, so. It's with a deep red shellac giving it the sheen of a bloody heart recently torn from its host body. It has a strange sigil on its side and filled with a smowl, foul-smelling fluid. Smowl? <sighs> All right. All right. Let's see where this is going. Doesn't appear to be heavy enough to pull, to depress it. Religious texts of an unspeakable nature, written in languages utterly utterable only by monsters or corrupt humans. Hmm, I have two fixed urns, and there was a fountain over here. You thinking what I'm thinking? A disturbing rendition of a monstrous devil. Is it? I can't tell. It is contorted in to what appears to be a fountain. What sickly liquid is draining into the pool, trickling from a scum-encrusted spout? A sewer drain, perhaps? Dunking the urn into the foul-smelling fountain, it becomes filled to the brink with rank fluid. It is a lot heavier. And rife with... Photor? Photon? This game sometimes uses big or obscure words that I am unfamiliar with. Alright, well, let's just. We stop rambling and just go ahead and take care of this. Hmm. What other dangers are in here? It's another door. You. So, you have come to return my book. Very well then. For your efforts, I promise a quick and merciful death. Oh, I'm 
sure you do. Head and he's still squirming. The bishop's key. A shrine to a god that bespeaks of an ancient evil that graced the earth before mankind walks its valleys. decompose first. Great sword is too big. Those are not flesh wounds. This isn't really happening. Well, apparently not. Is that thing really happening? What's that thing? Little. Well, it killed itself at least. But where the hell am I now? Trapper dimension sprawls in every direction. Whilst in this place magic cannot be cast, and humans are subject to odd phenomena. The portals cycle from color to color as time progresses, and only the quick will escape. Because I'm just gonna go to the other blue one? Yeah. the only thing that makes sense in a world gone mad. Hopefully this is the exit. Take me out of this hell. Very good. Trappers have no eyes, but they can sense sound very well. If Anthony can sneak past them, they won't be trouble. light my way just so I can find him. Okay, I'm guessing Anthony's looking at it right now. Let's get out of here. Don't want to 
like blood dripping from the ceiling. Yeah, more blood. I need to... I need to go to the visiting chamber. Ah, hell. Mm, yeah, you're not looking too good. Follow me. Let me. This game doesn't have checkpoints, so that's why I did that. If I die, I have to start from the beginning. If I didn't save it. No. Oh god. trying to save him, Anthony. His fate was decided many centuries ago, as is the fate of this world. Despite your faith, there is little to save you from the power of Zelenor. Things are about to get interesting now, in case you haven't noticed. And for anybody that's actually played uh, Metal Gear Solid, you may have recognized that guy's voice. He was the voice of Colonel Campbell from Metal Gear Solid. A lot of the uh, Metal Gear cast is actually going to be in this game. Second floor key. That was in the scroll, wasn't it? Damn. Well, 
before I go up there, I'm uh, I'm gonna go ahead and end the stream today now, and we'll head on up to the second floor, see what sort of see what sort of eldritch nightmares will be up there. I'll just go ahead and save it here. I'm glad you guys were able to join me and stick around for the whole time. And I hope to see you tomorrow. Take care, everyone.